Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 film Leap of Faith, William Friedkin on The Exorcist. And it's a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, November 19th. I'm putting this review out ahead of that time, so since it's uh, out before it's even hitting Shudder, and since it's a new film, uh, I am not having spoilers in this, which you don't even really need it. I mean, Based on what I'm going to tell you, you're either going to say this is my type of film or this is not my type of film. And this is a very polarizing type deal, not because it's like controversial or anything. It's just how it's done. Uh, it's really going to be for some people and it's really not going to be for other people. Um, I fall into the grouping of not really for me and I'll end up getting to why. And I think it's actually not going to be for most people. And I'll tell you why. Um What's it? Uh, it's written and directed by Alexander O. Phil Philippe or Philippe. Uh, has done films Chick Flick, The Miracle Mike Story, Earthlings, Ugly Bags of Mostly Water. That's a funny title. The Spot, The People vs. George Lucas, which I have seen that documentary and it is interesting. I would recommend that one. Uh, the Life and Times of Paul the Psychic Octopus. <laughs> Sounds like one I want to watch. Doc of the Dead, I have been meaning to see the Doc of the Dead one. 7852 Hitchcock's Shower Scene. I've also wanted to see that one. Although it seems like that one could be kind of boring because it's very focused on that one scene and how much time uh, can you really devote to something like that. Which kind of plays into this film. How much time can you devote to what's going on in this film? Which is just listening to William Friedkin talk about making The Exorcist. But not just talking about, like, there was this interesting story and this interesting story and this interesting story, but talking about it from the standpoint of these are all the influences that came to me. And he talks about music a lot, and he talks about artwork a lot, and he goes a little bit deep into those things. He does these side tangents talking about those things and kind of not just talking about those things, but also talking about them in other films and then tying it into The Exorcist. So it's more high concept stuff that he's talking about that some people are going to find really cool and very interesting. I could have, but it's it's presented in such a dry, boring way that I couldn't get behind liking this film. The other thing is it's an hour and 40 minutes, and it's basically like a lecture. I mean, William Friedkin is giving you a lecture for an hour and 40 minutes with not much of any break to it. Now, there are, you know, times where they're, and actually quite a bit, they're cutting to portions of films, you know, whether it is a portion from The Exorcist or it's a portion from another film or it's looking at a piece of artwork or, you know, anything like that. They do that, but it doesn't seem interesting. It doesn't seem that exciting, especially because the music that plays throughout this is very melancholy it's like melancholy string music that's very very light and it kind of lulls you to sleep and the combination of the light um i mean it's pretty music but the light music and william friedkin just talking and his voice is just kind of a, a bit monotone -ish. um it, it makes you feel like you want to go to sleep honestly so the big thing is are you someone who's been fine with you know staying awake during a lecture and are you engaged by lectures i personally am not that really bores the crap out of me i don't like that so i didn't really particularly enjoy this film that said like i was saying some people will really enjoy this for that reason the importance of the film is the information that william friedkin is giving about the exorcist now that said i would argue that I think this would have been way better if you got other people's opinions in addition, because an hour and 40 minutes of just William Friedkin is a bit much, especially because the man likes himself quite a bit. <laughs> uh, he, he has a propensity in this to tell stories about how he's better than people. Not saying that outright, but telling stories that illustrate how he's better than other people. And it's choice people. One of the ones that really took me aback was... Uh, Blatty, the guy who wrote The Exorcist, because there's a portion in it where he talks about how Blatty brought him a script for The Exorcist that he wrote. And Friedkin just talks about how he crapped all over it and how it was garbage and how whatever he was going to do was better. So those types of stories show up quite a bit. It's this ongoing theme. You can tell that Friedkin has a huge ego. You can tell he's probably a prick. Uh, 
to some degree. Maybe not one of those like outright pricks, but definitely one of those like, um, you know, talks to you condescendingly type pricks. But I have a feeling that on the set of The Exorcist, he was an outright prick, especially based off the uh, the stories that he tells. So I don't really like the guy based off <laughs> based off what I've read, what I've heard. And what I'm hearing him talk about in this documentary. Now, that said, I was able to kind of suspend that and really find some interest in some of the stuff he was talking about, like his influences and everything like that. But it's just not enough for me to ever want to watch this again. And after I was done with it, I felt exhausted. Um, it's too much. It's, it's, it's just too much, in my opinion. I think it, we, it would have been way better off, like I was saying, as like an actual documentary about the making of The Exorcist, just getting other people's opinions in addition to Friedkin. I mean, you can even give Friedkin a substantial amount of time talking to the camera. That's fine, but you needed other people. You really needed other people. But I will say the title tells you what it is. Leap of Faith, William Friedkin on The Exorcist. It isn't, there's no false advertising there, so just know that. Um, so the main crux of what Friedkin has to say in this, in the very beginning, is this kind of dichotomy, he says, of faith versus fate. Um, so that is an interesting thing, and he kind of brings that up a few times with uh, throughout. So the filmmaker did a good job of kind of keeping that main theme fresh and um, on your mind, so that worked. Um, the beginning of the film does not grab you. None of the film really grabs you all that much unless there's a particular story you're interested in, which here and there I found myself getting a little bit sucked into for particular stories. Uh, he explains the ways in which he believes that a higher power basically made the film through him and that what he was doing was not intentional and it wasn't him as a filmmaker and he, was, he wasn't a good filmmaker at that point. It was him being used as a conduit, basically. So he opens with that. And then it kind of explains that a little bit. But then he gives all these examples of these influences that he's pulled into The Exorcist. Which basically negates what he was saying in the beginning of not knowing what he was doing. Just kind of, he says like zombie walking through the film at one point, I think. And just being used by a higher power, basically. And it, it wasn't him, it was this higher power. But the whole rest of it is explaining where a lot of his influences came from. And in a lot of instances, tying other things directly into the exorcist and basically saying, see, here's an example. I did, I took this and did this. So he negates what he said. So that leads to another thing with this is, can you even believe what Friedkin is saying? That's another thing. One of the other things is he never even touches on the abusive nature of stuff that he did with Linda Blair on that set. He talks about it in context of a few other people, um, like slapping one of the actors, and says that that's not anything he would do nowadays, but he stays away from talking about the more controversial issues of more abusive stuff towards Linda Blair, which I've read about. Um, so... Um, how uh, how believable is this individual who's narrating the entire thing and telling his story? I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. Um, <laughs> uh, trying to he likens making the Exorcist to how we how building a a wonderful piece of music is done, and that's kind of interesting the way he talks about that because it shows that he has a lot of. Uh, experience with kind of picking music apart and one of the best things in this the part where I really got engaged when is when he was talking about how they achieved a lot of the sound effects in the film and what they used for that um, and I'm not going to spoil that stuff because if you do really want to watch it that is probably the most interesting thing it does seem kind of uh, more creative than you would think it was it's pretty out there at times but cool out there in a cool way and uh, very unique. So I, I did like that portion of it. Um, do, 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 do. He discusses his methods for getting certain things from the actors and crew. Like I said, he talked a little bit about being kind of abusive at times, but he also talked about, you know, just unconventional methods and he kind of ties it into some other 
um, some other directors and actually kind of blames the other directors for him doing it. Um, so kind of a way to, to wash his hands of any responsibility for doing things that way. There were some interesting ways they got certain sounds for, oh, I already talked about that. My apologies. He does touch on something I've talked about, not having music in the film tell people how they should be feeling. So I was very happy when I heard him talking about that because that's something I talk about on my movie reviews all the time, which is I love it when music is a little more understated, when music doesn't tell the audience, you're stupid, let me tell you how to feel right now. So he kind of talks a little bit about that, and that was cool. I was like, all right, I'm on board with that one, buddy. Um, he does touch on, on the individual nature of film viewing and how each person has kind of like their own reality and their own experiences that kind of act as a lens through which they end up seeing film, and that's different for everyone. So I thought that was an important point that he makes, but that's kind of made more towards the end. A lot of the stuff in the beginning is kind of more of like this, him just kind of like spinning off into all these like weird directions. It becomes a little bit hard to follow. It gets way more focused and interesting as it goes on. So as it goes much further on, um, he does reveal what he thinks was a mistake choice within the film. Uh, and he blames that on Blatty. Uh, for wanting uh, the film, the portion of the film to go that way and says that he didn't, that he just went with it because basically he couldn't come up with an alternative idea at that point. So, I don't know. It, it's just another one of those moments of like him just not taking responsibility for bad things and, you know, trash talking Blatty a lot in this, which I think is very low class. Uh, there's a callback at the end that kind of sums things up for how Friedkin feels in life and with The Exorcist. That was kind of that was well done. I do like how they kind of wrapped that up. Um, but yeah, that's mainly all I have to say about the actual film. Uh, I did have some thoughts afterwards. Would Friedkin be able to talk at length about how he made the film and draw all these parallels to films if he didn't know what he was doing? That's kind of my thing, saying that he basically undoes his initial argument. Uh, in the film and it's, it just doesn't make sense um and then i wrote this thing really needed ha to have the run runtime cut down because it drags like crazy it drags like crazy um an hour and 40 minutes of one person just talking you be the judge do you love william friedkin go for it do you love the exorcist that much that you want every little bit of knowledge about it go for it but i would argue that you can probably find an article online that has the same amount of information, maybe more, maybe a little bit less, but it would definitely take you less time to read that article than it would to watch this film. Just saying. That said, if this sounded at all interesting to you, go ahead and check it out. I'm not mad that I watched it once, but I will never watch it again, and I will be very selective with who I actually recommend it to. It has to be the right person, like I'm saying. Like, it has to be someone who I know can just sit there and listen to someone talk for an hour and 40 minutes about whatever they feel like talking about, as long as it's an exorcist. Uh, so anyway, that's my feeling on it. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm going to give this a two-star rating. Um, a bunch of the technical stuff was pretty solid. There, you know, there are good things within this, but I got to go with a two-star rating because it's just not engaging. And it's boring. It's too long. It's boring. It's not engaging. Just not a fan. So two stars. But what do you think? Once you see it, put some comments down there. We can talk about it. Spoilers, no problem. Go ahead. Uh, but do me a quick favor. I would appreciate it if you would hit that subscribe button if you like any review video or otherwise that I've done with this uh, channel, that'd be your best way to repay me because I don't make money doing this or anything. I'm just putting it out there so people can consume it and we can get nerdy and talk about things in the comments. So if you could just pay me back a little bit just with a subscribe, that'd be great. And then also hit the notification bell because then you'll know whenever I'm putting up a new review video or doing a live stream or any of the other random stuff I end up doing video wise. But regardless, I appreciate you taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.